So if you, sister, your husband doesn't pray on time, so we're good in, I mean, remind him, it's time for Salah. If he doesn't have properly, please, you know, we don't want you to lose that sinner. In this beautiful hadith from Rasulullah Sallallahu Hadith the Muslim Nabi Dawood. The Prophet says, Rahimullah, in Mu'at and Qala bin al Fasallat, wa Aikabat, Zawjaha, Aikabat, and Rahat bin Man. Rahimullah, who are you in Qala bin al Fasallat, from Aikabat, and Zawjaha, who are you in the Rahat bin Man. So it's a beautiful hadith. The Prophet says, in Muslim Nabi Dawood, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy on the wife. Or the lady who wakes up at night to pray, and she wakes up her husband to pray, and he, if he refuses, he will sprinkle her face with water. So, or actually, she will uh, sprinkle his face with water. She will wake up and pray. Then the Prophet says, "And may Allah subhanahu wa taala show his rahmah on the husband who wakes up at night and he prays, and he wakes up his wife to pray, and if she refuses, he will sprinkle her face with water. So she will wake up and pray." And I always say, because the brothers usually take my words uh, literally and seriously regarding the water thing, so they either do it with the hose or with the bucket. <laughs> no, sprinkle, gently, okay? And your children. This is the last thing I want to say. Your children. Most of us, most of us, assume that because you are a good person, you come to the mission and pray, you pray to God, you trust in a lot, your children would be good. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to teach them nothing, you don't teach them Quran, Akhlaq, nothing, and automatically they will be good. And of course, they spend eight hours every day at the public school, and as I always say, they are often taught by the Mahdoub alayhim wa and at the end of the year, ah, oh, my son would be like Omar, like Abu Bakr. Come on, you kidding me? You see me yourself? You have to do something, you have to teach them, okay? Hidayah at the end is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that in the story with Nuh, we decided a few nights ago, he was a prophet, he made out for 950 years, and his son was Kafir, and his wife was Kafir. Then you have someone like Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, the biggest tyrant of all time, and his wife was Mu'mina, believe me. So Hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never know, but at least you have to do your part. You have to do your part. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask you on the day of judgment if your children are millionaires. He will not ask you. As long as you left something decent to support them. But he will ask you if you taught them akhlaq, if you taught them Islam, if you made them good Muslims. Because this is what, the, what will matter at the end of the day. I always like to conclude with a story, very short. We're almost there. We'll finish, inshallah. Um, Muqatil ibn Sulaiman, you know this one. I mentioned it in one of the uh, he, he was a big scholar. He was invited by al Masur when al Masur was, he became a Khalifa. So he invited Muqadir ibn Sulaiman, the scholar, and he told him, please give me advice, give me nasiha. Today I'm a Khalifa. He said, Muqadir said, do you want me to give you advice based on something I saw in my own eyes or something I heard from someone else? He said, no, 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 from something you saw in your own eyes. He said, well, I saw in my own eyes Omar ibn Abdul Aziz radiallahu the Khalifa, when he died, he left 18 dinar. That's the only money he left, like 18 dollars or more or less. And he left 11 children. They bought a grave for him and a coffin, a shroud, for half the money. Then the other half was given to every child. So every child got like 75 cents. That's the whole thing. That's it. And the Malik ibn Mawad, who was also a Khalifa, when he died, he left for every child one million dinar. One million dinar. He actually left uh, 11 children, the same number of children, and he left 18 million dinar. 18 million. The first one, Omar ibn Abdul is only 18 dinar. The Malik ibn Mawad, 18 million. So each one of them got a little bit over a million. A million and 250,000 dinar. He said, Wallahi, the same day, I saw one of the children of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz who received 75 cents from their dad, but their dad gave him akhlaq, he told him Islam. He said, one day I saw one of the children of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz in the market giving a hundred camels or a hundred horses, peace of 
Wallahi, the same day I saw one of the children of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan who received more than a million dinar begging people for salafah in the market. The same thing. Why? Because his dad didn't teach him anything. He just left him money. The Prophet said, the best thing you can give for your children, the best gift you can give to your children is akhlaq, good manners. It's an authentic hadith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and to accept our good deeds in this world and to give the barakah of Laylatul Qadr and to forgive our parents and our spouses and our children and all of our families. The winner for tonight's question, the question was Shadrah of the Quran, the Quran, the first three in the Quran, and that is Shadrah al Zakum. And the winner is Sister Rujaina Sati. She already got the prize, alhamdulillah. The question for tonight is very easy. What is the longest ayah in the Quran? You can only answer it. You can only perform the Quran. And you can only stop the ayah.